Let me ask you a question. So, Mona Lee Brock from Durant, Oklahoma, you fielded so many calls from suicidal farmers. How did you keep them on the phone line? How did you keep them going? What kept you going? Maybe you have a story for us about one of those calls. Well, I, I do. Is this? Yes, just okay. a little. Uh, I do. Uh, the first, you know, I went into where I worked there for so many years, and my role, my job description was only to be a referral source for the farmers and, and put them in contact with the help that they need according to their uh, situation. And I got a call one day from a farmer, and my goodness gracious, uh, I asked what in the world uh, did I hear on the, in the other side of the telephone. And he said, well, this sound that you are hearing, is that it? Yep, uh, it is. And uh, he told me that it was an auction taking place out behind him, and he decided that he would call in. And sitting there, I, I, I thought, oh my goodness, what in the world? And I need to go back to where I came from right fast because I didn't know what to do in a case like that. And then the next sound I heard was the clicking of a cylinder, is that what you call it, on the gun. And I said, now what is that sound? And he told me. And uh, that's when I started praying again. And I did pray and I prayed hard. I, uh, at that moment, and he was far away from me across the state, and I was uh, seated at my desk wondering what, uh, how in the world I could contact some person to go to him. And at that moment, it was impossible, and uh, I started talking to him. The best thing that I knew to do at that moment was to keep him engaged in conversation, talking to, uh, to me about his family, about his farming, everything. And uh, I told him uh, that we discussed uh, uh, the farm that was being auctioned off, that he was young, that he could start over. And from that point on, the next one uh, that came in was a neighbor who was telling me that he was doing fine, just about as possibly as uh, the best he could do in his lifetime, had no complaints about anything, and then uh, the call came to me the next morning that he had gone over to his north pasture to check on his cattle and he had called his daughter to come over and pick up his body. And at that moment, I knew that something was terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. And I started uh, working and uh, working with the attitude of picking up clues in their conversation because they were coming in, coming in fast and they were already in depression and my only hope was uh, to get a network across the state uh, that I could write a note to the secretary to call that contact person in the county in which the farmer lived. And I would keep the farmer on the telephone uh, talking to me until a knock came to his door. This was the best and the most effective way that I knew of and that it did work. And we were able to put local farmers, the, neighbor, the neighbors of those farmers in contact with him until we could get some help to him and possibly uh, organize some means for him to receive treatment or to go to uh, a local mental health institution for in-house treatment for quite a long time and just engaging the farmer in conversation and that there was hope for tomorrow that this is not going to get him down he's made it this long and uh, the underlying thing was to keep him going keep him on the telephone until those people could get there and then we would uh, contact uh, mental health professional to go to him 
and get the professional help to help him over the depression.